It's time to check in on all of the progress around Universal's epic universe, including the latest construction milestones, new permit details, and attraction rumors. With track being installed at roller coasters in four different areas of the park, building exteriors taking shape, and even some themed elements popping up, it's an exciting time for this upcoming theme park in Orlando. Let's take a look at everything happening around Epic Universe in today's news update. We're starting our update at the future entrance to the park, where two structures are taking shape that will someday flank either side of the park's main gate. We can make out the curvature of the south sides of these buildings, which will make up the round entry courtyard just outside the park. These structures are listed in permits as multi-purpose buildings that will contain things like guest services and the park's largest gift shop. Moving into the park, work on a full-service restaurant and bar rumored to be named Atlantic has been picking up. Plans for this location show most of the dining room on a section lower than where you enter, with picture windows overlooking the park's water features. The kitchen areas, which are under construction now, will be set below the restaurant's entrance, with what appears to be some sort of access tunnel for deliveries to and from backstage without having to pass through guest areas above. One restaurant within the hub of Epic Universe that is looking more complete than others is this one set right outside of the Universal Monsters Land. Rumored to be named Elysian Barbecue, the two round covered seating areas for this location could be seen on the sides, as well as the outline for its entrance between them. The shapes for the hub's central lagoons are well carved out, leading to the flat ride within the center of the park. Parts of the ride pit for this spinner attraction have been enclosed, and footings for supports for the future canopy over the attraction are now more defined. But it doesn't appear that work on the mechanics for the actual ride within the center has begun. Construction progress for the hub's large, dual-track roller coaster is more obvious, as several new pieces of track have been installed near the start of the ride. Areas within the station building and maintenance bay have also received quite a bit of work since we last checked in. Zooming out, however, is where we see the most progress, with a web of new track supports now installed for the latter half of the ride. Manufactured by Mock Rides, this launched dual-track racing coaster is rumored to be named Starfall Racers. With the fastest speeds and biggest thrills of the park, I'm sure it'll be an attraction that Coaster fans are definitely going to love. Located just beside this massive coaster project, we see progress on another roller coaster for the park, but this one will be located within the How to Train Your Dragon land. Supports and track have been installed for this section along the edge of the land. This part of the family-style launched coaster comes right after passing below the water level of the land's lagoon dipping under a bridge. This lagoon will be the first thing that greets visitors when entering the Dragon's Land, and a major landmark within this lagoon is starting to take shape. Here there will be several Viking ships, which the bases that will support them can already be seen, but there will also be two statues facing the land's entrance as well. The two large statues will be like the ones seen at the start of the third film and one of them, which appears to be a dragon in the plans, has just received its framing. Plans for this area also show natural gas lines running beneath the lagoon and ending at the statues for a flame effect. Going by the scale of the equipment nearby, these iconic statues will be quite large. Across the How to Train Your Dragon land, work is progressing on the theater. Permits say this indoor theater will have at least 985 seats. Many believe this theater will feature a show similar to or the same as Untrainable at Universal Studios Beijing. Recent notice of commencements filed with Orange County show many of the manufacturers and companies that are working on Epic Universe. For the Dragon's Land, Tate Towers Manufacturing is listed as one of these companies. They specialize in large-scale stage show media integration, like the technology used in the Bourne Stuntacular show, as well as Untrainable. Other companies mentioned in these recent documents, specifically for this particular land, include Intamin, who is expected to have manufactured the roller coaster, Gerslauer, who will be providing the Skyfly flat rides, 
Mock Rides, who is providing the Splash Battle Boat Ride, as well as other companies like Holoviz, who specialize in audio-video integration. Over in Super Nintendo World, documents show Setpoint as a contractor, which is the company creating the Donkey Kong roller coaster, and Sansei Technologies, who are listed as providing elements for the Yoshi ride. The Universal Monsters Land features work by Mock Rides, who we suspected was providing the new spinning roller coaster, as well as Peterson Incorporated, which is said to be working on the ride system for the land's main e-ticket attraction. The Wizarding World area of Epic Universe has documents showing Tate Towers working on something here too, as well as SimTech Systems and Industrial Smoke and Mirrors. Interestingly, both SimTech Systems and Industrial Smoke and Mirrors develop and install motion simulator attractions. They could possibly both be working on elements of the large Ministry of Magic attraction, but the documents don't say. The exteriors around the huge Ministry of Magic attraction are now some of the furthest along in the park, with the streets of Wizarding Paris becoming clearer with every update. This dead-end street within the land will serve as the entrance to the area's main attraction, which will take us into the British Ministry of Magic using the Flu Network. A recent permit included a small graphic showcasing the layout for what may be the entrance and exit areas for this attraction. This graphic also illustrates the Flu Network hallway of fireplaces leading to the impressive round atrium. Rumors say that the large round atrium will feature a fountain in the center with wizarding statues that will be 20 feet tall, surrounded by towering office windows in a section of the building that is more than five stories tall. One interpretation of these plans could have this area behind the fountain, which is set back a bit, as a sort of large screen extending our view infinitely. Perhaps acting like the giant LED screen from the Bourne Stuntacular, this theorized set extension could also be a way to incorporate the paper airplane-shaped inter-office memos that fly overhead in the films. The queue areas and unique entry into the Ministry of Magic attraction are all in the first parts of the building, but all of the ride areas will be contained within the large structure at the back. Also attached to this building is the Lands Theatre attraction, which is also receiving some exterior work as well. Across from this structure, on the other side of the street, work is picking up for one of the Lands' two dining locations, as well as attached restrooms. The facades for retail locations and the other dining establishment closer to the land's entrance are also starting to receive steel framing. Across the park, within the Universal Monsters Land, the village streets are taking shape here as well. The retail shop on the left and dining location on the right are receiving themed exteriors to make this winding entry street feel more like a European village. At the end of the street, Dead ahead will be the towering facade for the area's main attraction, an indoor dark ride. The other attraction for this land, a spinning roller coaster, looks to have had all of its track delivered and has been installing more of it each day. We will be digging deeper into this coaster project, including its possible layout, very soon. Themed elements for the portal that will act as the entrance to the Universal Monsters Land are beginning to be installed. This is rumored to be themed as an electrical tower surrounded by old tree roots. The entry portal over at Super Nintendo World is making good progress as well. Looking to the other side of the large warp pipe entry, the stairs in front of Peach's Castle have appeared, as has the framing for the Flat Hills backdrop all around the land. It's easy to get bogged down in the incredible details that are being added now, from the Yoshi Ride in Mushroom Kingdom areas up front to the Mario Kart Ride and Donkey Kong roller coaster behind it, but shockingly, here is how the area looked just one year ago. Everything we're seeing now simply did not exist in January 2022, so it's amazing to see how far we've come in such a short time. Just outside of the Super Nintendo World Land, work on what we believe will be a Nintendo gift shop facing the hub has reached a new milestone. Decorative elements have been added over the store's entrance, with a new dome along the roof. Attached to the right of this store, according to permits, will be restrooms, 
and then a small restaurant, which is rumored to be a quick service location that serves pizza named Moon Pie. Near the back of the park, one of the last projects to get started is picking up the pace now, the attached hotel. Known as Project 910 in permits, it is expected to be named Universal's Helios Grand Hotel due to a trademark filed by the company in 2021. The trademark isn't the only time we've seen this name, however, as the guest road leading to this hotel is named Helios Road in documents filed with the county. A tunnel has been constructed for the team member backstage road that this future Helios Road will pass over. While progress on the hotel at the back of the park has been slow, the hotel being built across the street from Epic Universe is moving much, much quicker. Known as Project 912, this hotel is using a faster building method than Helios. Prefabricated sections are lifted into place using this method, which has allowed the hotel to essentially pop up out of nowhere in just a matter of weeks. This hotel, which is being built by the same company behind the Endless Summer Resort, appears to feature rounded windows. This may be to go along with the space theme that it's rumored to have, along with its sister hotel, Project 913, nearby. The company's trademarked names, Universal's Stella Nova Resort and Universal's Terra Luna Resort, are expected to be used for these two hotels. Land clearing is happening now over at Project 913, and work is expected to begin on that within the next few months. These three hotels make up the official hotel offerings for Epic Universe when the park opens in 2025. Another new hotel was just announced to be built within this area as well, but this one will not be an official Universal Resort. Marriott has announced plans to build a W Hotel branded 22-story tower just outside of Epic Universe. With 400 rooms, an on-site 2,000-seat music venue, and a six-story parking garage, this proposed luxury hotel does not yet have an opening time frame, but the developer says they hope to break ground by the end of the year. That's all for now, but check out the Everything Epic Universe playlist for more details on every area of the new theme park, and stay tuned for more construction updates coming soon. If you like the channel, please consider joining our Patreon for perks like behind the scenes information, your name in the credits, and more. Patreon.com slash theme park stop. Thanks for watching. See you next time.